There were very few people who knew what really went on inside of our home. Whenever we got in our discussions, I, I felt like I couldn't control the emotion that was going on inside of me. I was a button pusher, and I knew what buttons to push. My anger would just flare out of control, and it would turn into an, an explosion. From friendly to horrible in a matter of seconds. I think he felt like things were swirling. I could out-talk him. I could, I could take the entire situation, no matter what I had done in it, it could be about Hans. It could be his fault. We were in an argument and I grabbed her as hard as I could and I threw her down on the bed. I had this little bit of justification that because I didn't actually physically lay a fist on her and um, blacken a part of her body, that it really wasn't as bad as what she was saying it was. I was really afraid at that point because we were married and we had a baby and things were not getting better. So while he was gone for a week, I had become very involved in an affair. I pulled up in the driveway and uh, Star met me um, there with her bags packed with our then two-year-old daughter, Kylie. And um, we went through the exchange of, what are you doing? And she says, I'm leaving. I'm like, why? And she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> why? I expected my parents to just receive me with, you know, loving arms. And when I got to, uh, to their house and explained to them what was going on, they said, if you're going to live in our house, um, you need to go to marriage counseling. I had started out that counseling session um, ranting and raving about how Star was doing this wrong and doing that wrong. I started throwing God's word in there and that, you know, she's not doing this, she's not respecting me. I mean, the Bible says that I deserve to be respected, right? He took a long pause and he started to read Philippians 2 to me. Jesus came to this earth and deserved everything. He deserved for people to bow down at his feet. He deserved for all the riches in the world. And he had a biblical right to all those things. And yet he chose to take the nature of a servant and he chose to surrender those rights to God the Father. And as I looked at my life and I looked at Jesus' life and I saw the, the, <laughs> the huge gap in between the two, um, the lights came on for me. I had accepted Jesus for my forgiveness of my past sins so that I could spend eternity with him forever, but I was missing the gospel of the now. And I was missing the gospel and its effect and its impact on me today. And from that point on, my anger was um, in a totally different perspective. He was changing. And I didn't like that because everyone either knew or suspected that they knew what I was doing and he was becoming this great guy and no one really knew the ins and outs of why I left. We would fight and I would push all the same buttons and he did not respond the way that I was used to him responding. I mean, you have to understand, <laughs> my life was radically transformed. I remember being very drawn to the man that he was becoming, but now the relationship was dead. I decided I was gonna to go to counseling. Two to three sessions and then be done. That way I can say that I tried and it just didn't work. And so I was going to pursue a divorce. I vented everything to him about why there was just no way that we were gonna make it. And he just listened. And then he looked at me in the eye very intently and said, do you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? And I said, yes, I believe that. He said, you think that God can take a dead man and raise him to life to save you, but you don't think he can heal your marriage. And so, I turned to God this much. It takes 100% uh, dependency on Christ in, in the moment, in the now. And it looks like constant confession and repentance for me. A light that had been shut off came on, and I wondered, what if God could do it? 